Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Adam, I'm from MapTailor, and I will tell you what's new in the latest version of the MapTailor plugin. At the beginning, quick question, raise your hand if you use the plugin. Okay, good, few, few. Okay, so uh, the MapTailor plugin is the easiest way how to add uh, styled vector tiles into QGIS. Uh, it's open source, the code is on the GitHub. Uh, if you find any problem, feel free to report any bugs and ideally push some PRs. Um, it's possible to add uh, both vector tiles and raster tiles. Uh, you can add the map uh, with multiple uh, tile sources. Uh, the plugin comes with predefined maps from a tile cloud. But if you have your own tiles or own uh, style JSON, host it anywhere else, you can use the plugin as well. Yeah, and that's what you get with the plugin. Uh, if you need a uh, map, a base map for your data, for your visualization, uh, you can use the plugin and it doesn't matter if you need street level map, it doesn't matter if you need just a uh, basic map or some uh, thematic map like outdoor, uh, we will have some map for you. Uh, because it's based on vector tiles, uh, these maps are uh, good for printing because it's vectors. Uh, no, no pixels as with uh, raster tiles. Yeah, another question. Raise your hand if you are familiar with the vector tiles technology. Okay, so I will don't, don't deep too much. Uh, yeah, so vector tiles, uh, pseudo mercator, uh, ZXY, same as raster. What's different? Vector tiles are included in binary PBF. Uh, you don't get the image in PNG or WebP. You will get the, just the data and you have to render them on a client. Uh, what you see, this is four tiles uh, of, um, of, of Florence. And you can see uh, they're not styled. They are styled just uh, by their uh, layer. And it has uh, no good visualization. Uh, you can also see that, there's, uh, that the tiles uh, contain several layers, point, lines, polygons. And uh, data are stored in the tiles uh, in, these, in these layers. Uh, the things that decide what data will be stored in the tiles uh, is defined in vector tile schema. Uh, we use open map tiles vector tile schema, which is open source project. And uh, if you are more interested in this, come tomorrow uh, for talk of my colleague, Tom Pohanka. He will tell you more. Okay, so as I said, tiles uh, keep just data. Uh, tiles are defined in tile JSON, uh, and style is def defined in style JSON. So really quickly, this is how can uh, tile JSON look like. The important thing is that uh, there is a key value pair tiles where you can see a link to to an endpoint with XXY placeholders for the actual tiles. And the style JSON where the important things to see are the key value pair layers where the style is defined uh, and sources where the sources of the tiles are defined. Uh, in the style JSON there can be more things like uh, definition of uh, fonts you want to use, sprites and uh, other metadata. Uh, the important thing to say is that the style JSON, which defines the style of the map, uh, can have multiple sources. This is how the style JSON uh, looks for our outdoor map. So you can see there is a source for outdoor features, for contours. Uh, there is raster source for terrain RGB tiles and uh, another source for, uh, for uh, different vector tiles. This is how it looks uh, the layer definition. Uh, you can see that there is the property paint. 
uh, and that's what uh, we read in the plugin. It's about the map styling. On the left side, you can see uh, the non-styled tiles, and on the right, uh, right hand, uh, right side, you can see uh, how the same tiles look like when you uh, give them a style. Uh, you can see that the difference is quite huge, and on the uh, right side, it's our uh, OpenStreetMap style. I added few a uh, few more examples. The important thing to say, the tiles are always the same, and you change just the style JSON, which is like a few kilobyte uh, file. Okay, back to the plugin. You can install it from plugin menu, like any other, uh, any other plugin. After the installation, uh, you will get a map tiler item in the browser panel, and you will get the predefined uh, maps. Uh, what the plugin actually does, uh, it reads the style JSON, reads the sources, and uh, it, adds, it, it adds them as a new layer sources. So you can see it, it uh, reads outdoor style JSON and adds several uh, layer sources. And then it reads the style JSON, um, the style definition, and uh, starts to convert the style. The style in the style JSON is defined in GLJS, uh, and it uh, has to be converted into the QGIS styling API. So on the left side, you can see this is how the uh, um, style is defined in style JSON. It's just uh, color of the fill and the opacity, and this is how it looks in, uh, in uh, QGIS layer styling. This is quite easy. It can get complicated uh, if you add some interpolation as you zoom in and out. You can see that in style JSON it's five, five lines of code. Uh, in QGIS, you need to use uh, QGIS expressions, but the definition style JSON can be defin uh, complicated like this one, and then you have to parse this into the uh, into the QGIS expressions, and that's where the things get complicated. Uh, uh, we released uh, the uh, version three of the of the plugin. Uh, it needs uh, the latest QGIS 3.26. And what is new, we started to use tokens instead of API keys with uh, RGB terrain tiles, and we add some uh, new maps. Uh, tokens, in the past, you asked, uh, you, you need API key from MapTiler Cloud if you want to use uh, our maps. Uh, now you need to use tokens. It's a bit more secure with every request signed. Uh, so uh, it prevents from stealing your API as it was in the in the in the past. Uh, you can get your uh, you can get the token on the mapTiler.com uh, slash cloud uh, page. Uh, we have a free plan, and uh, of course, if you have an open source project and free plan is not good for uh, good uh, enough for you, let us know. We are happy to. Uh, negotiate some uh, some uh, better conditions for you. Uh, yeah, if you if you use your own tiles and uh, your style JSON is hosted somewhere else, you don't need a token at all. Uh, this is how you just uh, how look the website at Mapteller Cloud. You create a token and uh, paste it into the account uh, window of the Mapteller plugin. The new thing that the token is stored in authentication database of, of QGIS, uh, it might be confusing because if you uh, add the token, you will be asked for, for another password, and this password is uh, for the authentication database. If you already uh, use it in QGIS, then you are fine. If you didn't use it be before, uh, you have to create the password. Uh, you will probably just store it there and never use it again, but uh, that's a new thing, and you can see the token then stored in the QGIS setting uh, and uh, in the authentication part of the, of the options. 
Another thing we added is uh, global DEM. Um, it was added uh, after the release of QGIS 3.24, uh, when there was a new feature added, uh, which uh, enabled to convert uh, XYZ raster tiles into the terrain tiles. Uh, and in QGIS 3.26, there was a um, edit uh, option for uh, early resampling, which helped that the hill shade uh, looks good even if you overzoom the tiles. Uh, both of these features were developed by Lutra, uh, so big thanks uh, to them. Uh, you can apply any symbology to the to the DEM, and uh, Depends what 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 you need. Uh, the maps which benefits from the from the new DEM is our outdoor and winter map. I will show them later. Uh, my colleague Tom had a great workshop on Tuesday. If you are interested, there is a link to his booklet, and uh, there is a uh, step by step uh, description of what you can do with uh, with the ter terrain, with its styling, and uh, how to use it in 3D. So this is the this is the actual uh, terrain tiles. Uh, these are actually the uh, two vector tiles layers. Uh, the one at the bottom is uh, DEM with uh, with pseudo color uh, symbology, and on top of it, it's a uh, hill shade. And you can see that you can not use it for uh, small to large scales. Yeah, you can use it for contours. And this is our winter map and outdoor map, which use the tiles as well. Uh, you can use the tiles even in the, in the 3D. One option is to use uh, native QGIS uh, 3D map view. Uh, in the configuration, just use the layer uh, as an elevation source. Uh, if you use the 3D map view, it works uh, good with uh, tiles. Uh, the other option, yeah, this is how it looks in the in, in the map view. So uh, this is uh, the DEM tiles, and on top of it is our uh, satellite satellite map. This is Lake Como in in Northern Italy. The other option is to use uh, QGIS to 3JS plugin. Uh, it's, uh, it works only with uh, static files, so if you want to use it, uh, you need to export the tiles into, into TIFF or any other raster file. Uh, it help, uh, it uh, looks a bit similar. I think it's maybe a little bit user-friendlier, and uh, it also helps you export the 3D into uh, HTML or um, e uh, easy web page. The last thing we added in the, in the latest versions are new map styles. Uh, satellite, it's not really a new map style, but we updated the data. So now you can access satellite uh, with a 10 meter resolution from 2021 data. Uh, we added OpenStreetMap uh, style and uh, winter style and also uh, cadastral style, which is now only in Switzerland or we have data only in Switzerland, but we plan to at other countries. Uh, so these are some pictures from the, from the satellite map which you can have in your QGIS project. Uh, this is new open street map in the center of Zurich. Winter map uh, where you can see the ski slopes as polygons, uh, chair lifts. And this is the Swiss cadaster. The plugins come with predefined maps, but you can also customize them. You have several options how to customize. Uh, you can uh, do it either in uh, directly in QGIS, or you can do it uh, on our cloud. We have a customized tool, which is like a simple version. You can change their colors, language, fonts, or world views. Uh, and then we have a uh, map tiler uh, cloud editor, which is like Maputnik full power editor. And if you customize these maps on our cloud, you can then easily export them via, via style JSON 
back to QGIS. So this is the simple customize, customize tool uh, where you can change the colors, uh, change the language. I change the language of the labels to Italian, and I uh, play with the colors a little bit. Uh, this is the Mapitnik editor. Yeah, so that's pretty much pretty much it. Uh, as I said, easy to add vector tiles into your QGIS projects. We, uh, uh, you can have some default maps, but you can use you can have some default maps from a tile cloud, but you can add your own own style JSON. It's great for printing. Uh, please be aware that it's for non-commercial use only. If you want to use for commercial use, uh, please make sure that you have a uh, good, uh, good subscription. And you can also customize the styles and use the RGB terrain for your projects. Thank you.